You ready, Greg? Let's go, Jay. You're listening to The Success Paradigm with your hosts, Jay Atkins and Greg Gray. All right, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Whenever you're watching this podcast live, we are excited to be back here, Jay Atkins, Greg Gray, and we have a guest that is going to light it up today. It's Mr. Jared Moore. Uh, Jared has a little problem with having energy on a podcast. I say tongue in cheek, you will see you have in a couple of minutes. So let me introduce uh, Jared formally. So Jared Moore is the owner and operator of Aqua Aces LLC a commercial parking lot and building exterior maintenance company. Aqua Aces has continued growing even through a pandemic, along with the myriad of other challenges that today's business environment throws an entrepreneur's way. Originally from Oakwood, Texas, a small town of less than 500, growing up in a small town taught Jared the value of hard work, sacrifice, discipline, and to be, quote, tougher than boil shoe leather. I have heard that one before. Jared grew up working on ranches, construction, as well as hunting, fishing, playing sports, and being heavily involved in ac academic pursuits. Jared was the first in his family and only member of his class to graduate from a major university. Graduating from Texas A&M with a Bachelor of Economics in 2007 during a global, glo global recession led Jared to work in a small bank in College Station. This gave Jared great insight into and great experience with this small business lending. In 2009, to further his skill set, Jared, uh, I'm going to say that sentence again. In 2009, to further his skill, Jared took a job with Sewell Automotive, a luxury car dealer where he not only benefited from elite sales training, he also met a guy named Paul Clark, who has been a guest of ours on the Success Paradigm. Jared began working for PPC Loan in the Allstate Lending Department. After working on loans for Allstate, dentists, veterinarians, and trying to bolster deposits for partner banks, Jared was presented with an opportunity to purchase two books of business and merge them together. Working with the two agencies, Jared found that he loved turning around businesses by improving their processes, reinvesting, and building a rock star staff. Jared and Paul would eventually team up to identify folks who would be great agency owners and help them open scratch agencies. He would go on to participate in other endeavors, including a training hub for agency staff and even an IV infusion therapy clinic. In 2019, Jared sold his main Allstate location and having too much energy, <laughs> too idle for too long, began working on the company that would become Aqua Aces. He went on to purchase certain assets from a parking lot company in, the Woodland, in Woodlands, Texas, in the Woodlands, Texas, to add on to Aqua Aces suite of services. Jarrett currently lives in Montgomery, Texas with his wife, Megan, son, Jet, and daughter, Lily. And he still enjoys hunting, fishing, sports, but loves family time, including movie night the most. So ladies and gentlemen, that is our guest today, Mr. Jared Moore. Welcome aboard, Jared. Glad to have Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Welcome, Jared. And, and apparently he has hair envy. Um, I just learned and I had a hat on today, so he didn't even get to like compare his hair to mine. So I apologize. Which means I win. You did. You, <laughs> I win to that. I win you, to went, you, de you definitely win on technicality. That's for sure. Yeah, um, no, no, I want to take it. I'm going to definitely run with that. So in the sudden death elimination that goes on later, I just have to be slightly better than you, you know, with our hair. You know. I'll tag in later. <laughs> I'm, very, yeah, I'm, I'm very competitive, Jared. I'm very competitive. Um, I understand. It, 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 although Greg, you could compete um, with here our friend go. over at PPC Paul. So if here he was on go. here, it could be could be a valid competition. Although I think he has more hair than you. Um, right. So uh, Jared, super excited to have you here, man. And um, you know, as we always start this podcast off, we always want to hear more about the story than the glory because everyone usually sees the glory and and you know has this envy, hair envy, whatever you call it. Um, of how my hair got that way. And what we want to know is, you know, how long you've been working. No, I'm just kidding. Let me get off the hair thing. Um, we we want to know about Jared Moore. Obviously, in your bio, we heard a lot uh, of your journey. But I think that journey started way before when you went to work for PPC and worked for Allstate. And we'd like to hear about that. And what we would really like to hear about and what our listeners would like to hear about is some of the major failures you had in your life that actually you turned around. Because one of the things you said in your bio 
is that you like to turn businesses around. And usually that means it's a failing business. Most are in these days. I mean, only a small percentage are really successful and really profitable. So what, what were those failures in your life and what mindset and mentality did you have then and do you have now that got you to the place you are now? And then like to also hear where you want to go um, and what you're doing to get there. So yeah. wherever you want to start, man, let's, let's just uh, start with this story and, and uh, help these people get the glory. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm just going to, I'll start with something. I, you know, I pray a lot because, you know, having a lifestyle is like mine. You, d- you definitely need to pray a lot. And I think my wife probably play, prays way more than I do because she's married to me. But, you know, if, if one, if, if my story can help one person, you know, to overcome something, I think like it's, it's totally worth it. And as I was kind of talking to Greg earlier, I was like, man, you guys must be hard up, but you know, if my story helps somebody, then it's totally worth it. And, and, and I definitely appreciate you guys having me on here. Um, you know, like the bio, like the bio said, I was born in a small town, 1984. You know, I'm only 36. I get that a lot. Like the first time I walked into my insurance agency uh, after I purchased it, there was this little old lady and she goes, who the hell is that kid? And my office manager goes, well, that's the new boss. And so, you know, being young and on this stuff is, is, is something that's always just kind of presented itself. And I've always tried to grow past my, my start. But anyway... Uh, yeah, it was a small town, less than 500 people. Um, parents split up at an early age, and it comes and that comes into play a lot because I moved in. You know, you stay stay with your mom in Texas for a little while. Well, she went down some really bad roads, um, and it kind of it started to light a fire in me. I was always one of the kids that, like, in I don't know if y'all had reading in class. I'm sure y'all did, but like in elementary, they, we had this game called popcorn, right? So popcorn was where you would read out loud, and then the rest of the kids would you know, popcorn. So you'd read like a little, you know, a couple sentences or whatever. I was one of the kids that they wanted to read right before recess because I knew, you know, how to sound out words and do it pretty quickly. But that's kind of an overacting theme with, with class, right? Like I was always the guy that was reading a lot, you know, studying, doing those things and still having fun. But, you know, I understood that I didn't have to study it hard, that hard, especially like in high school and stuff. But anyway, um, you know, there was, there was, there's was one night that really kind of comes into play for me. So I had this uh, stepdad who wasn't a, a gra- exactly a great person. Uh, we lived on the Trinity River and when I was a kid, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a river here in, in Texas, runs from Dallas to Houston. And um, these guys decided to get chemically imbalanced uh, and, and take this boat out in the middle of the night when the river had left its banks. It's, by the way, horrible idea for any of your listeners. Uh, we heard a gunshot go off, all right, and that was it. Didn't hear anything. I don't have, and by the way, we didn't have a phone. So we're in the country. We're about eight. Uh, we're about eight miles down a back road, um, roughly. We didn't have a phone, and the, and the neighbor's like a mile away. Now I don't know if you guys are, are familiar with river bottoms and things like that. There are all sorts of non-savory creatures that you want to run into, right? So, um, and this was in probably fourth grade. So fourth grade, I, I, I get my hey, sisters Jared, up. Jared, I got yeah. I got to stop you. I just got to say, we've never had a podcast start off like this before, talking about <laughs> river bottoms and creatures. And all. Hey, very, it all comes into play. <laughs> it's very, very interesting so far, I just have to say. Very, very interesting. <laughs> very great visuals. I mean, the story is good. The story is good. I'm going to sell it. Hey, I'll sell you a story, you know. <laughs> but this uh, it's the same story two years from now, two years before. Like, that's the beauty of them. They're, you know, when, they're, when you're telling the truth, you don't have to worry about it. That's but, right. um, but uh, so, yeah. So, I loaded up my two sisters who were, you know, a lot smaller than me. And we walked a mile um, in the dark with some kitchen knives and a BB gun because that's going to take down a hog or a panther. But it made me feel any better. And we walked to the, we walked to the neighbor's house and we called the, uh, called the, called my, my mother who was working at a nursing home so in the middle of the night. So, you know, these are the sort of things that we kind of grew up seeing, you know, it's like just really kind of rough. I eventually moved in with my dad. Me and my dad are still close to this day, loving to death. Um, my grandmother was a big, you know, on her side was a big, uh, you know, big help to me in raising me and all this other stuff. But, you know, it was, I told her one time, Hey, I don't think I'm gonna go to college. And she said over my dead body. So, and this woman's like five foot tall and, um, you know, she will, she, she kind of should throw those at you, you know, every now and then when you kneel. So, uh, <laughs> but no, I, I went to a really small school in, 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 in Texas here. Um, I was one of the, I was the, the only one in my class to go to a major university, um, first one in my family to actually graduate from university. And so that was a big thing for us, right? You know, and in high school, I, I learned that I was a pretty smart guy. Um, and then college taught me that I didn't know a damn thing um, because I got to A&M and, and realized that, man, all that not studying that I've been doing, um, you know, because I can show up and take the test and, and make a 95 on it with no problem. Uh, that that had to end. <laughs> 
uh, there was a lot of, you know, as, as my sisters would call me the golden child because my grandma, I was the oldest and, you know, I defended them and talked a lot about them. But as we, as I learned, I was like, man, maybe I'm not so golden after all. And so I had to learn, I learned a lot, you know, I had to learn about how to study and how to really put myself into something that maybe didn't come naturally to me. Um, in high school, I played sports, like I said, uh, loved football. And that was one of the big things for me. I mean, coming from the background that I came from, uh, I had a little bit of an anger thing. And so, you know, basically the water boy, you know, Adam Sandler style, like without, with, with less of a speech impediment, um, was great. Loved, uh, loved to, so they, I think it talked a little bit about academic pursuits. So I was, I loved the cross-examination debate, got into that, learned how to formalize arguments and, and more importantly, listen to the other side of arguments. Um, and not just hear my side, right? And so, because you had to formulate, you know, your affirmative and your negative cases and all that wonderful stuff. And so you couldn't just, oh, well, I'm sitting on this this side of the issue, right? Like it doesn't work that way. And you had to learn like, okay, this is where they're right. So if you attack it, it's not going to work, you know, because that's, you know, you're, you're proving their point. So you have to find holes and things. And, and that was something that I enjoyed doing. Um, and then I worked on I worked on a ranch and I worked with my dad. So I don't know if you guys have seen the memes about holding the flashlight for your dad, but I was one of those kids that seemed to point it everywhere, but where I was a point to point it, you know. <laughs> but I worked for him, and then I worked for the uh, my step grandpa at the time. Uh, they worked for a ranch that was one of the daughters of the King Ranch, and so I learned how to be tough because there wasn't a you know oh you're you're fourteen great that just means you got a strong back. <laughs> Right. Um, you know, and I'll, and I'll never forget, you know, and these are all kind of things that kind of, you know, I, I anchor to is, is what I get in well, and to, to talk about, like the failures and things like that, that we'll talk about later. Um, you know, when you when I get into those positions, sometimes you sometimes I have to get to kind of re-anchor yourself or recenter yourself. Where did I come from? You know, and where have I been? Because then you start looking at that line and man, life isn't so bad as you might think it is. Mm. Um, you know, I'll never forget one of the, uh, one of the best, one of the best compliments I ever got. So these are cowboys, right? And when you, you know, you guys in Florida, maybe y'all, I don't know if y'all seen really many real cowboys, but these are guys that ride horses and, and do all the stuff that cowboys do. It's not just, you know, they put on some bedazzled jeans and a, um, and a hat and you know, like, Oh man, I'm a cowboy. Like, you know, these guys work with cattle. So my, my grandpa, he wasn't a whole lot of, his, his name was Tudor and it wasn't a whole lot of, um, you know, we weren't like hugging it out every day, anything like that. He would, I loved him to death, super great guy, and learned a lot from him. But I'll never forget we were pushing two calves. We, so when you weigh calves to ship them off to, for meat, mm-hmm. all right, you push them into this chute, and there's, you know, there's like two to three of them. And you push them onto the scales so they can get weighed because that's how you get paid, all right. Well, this particular scale didn't have a back door. So you had to push them in all about the same time, right? All right. And that's that's a challenge in and of itself. Yeah, I got to get them all kind of there because these things are not exactly just listening like puppy dogs. These are, you know. So anyway, we're pushing up this alley, push them into this thing. And uh, yeah, two go in and one does it. So I get the second one in as, a, as the uh, the other two come out and they nail me like right here on both sides of my ribs. All right. Knocks the breath out of me. I think you know, I'm dying, but I'm not going to show that. And Jack, uh, one of the guys that was out there goes, man, he's hurt. And the guy that I was working for, Tudor Step Grandpa, goes, if he was, he wouldn't tell you. And wow. that, I, you know, like I said, there's those areas you come back to in life, right? Like, man, if that guy said I was tough, then I got to be tough because he's tough, right? And so that's, you know, that's that starts formulating like all of this thing. Like if, if I can face down an 800-pound calf, you know, with horns that just nailed me, then in football, I can face down a 200-pound running back and think it's a holiday, you know? Right. <laughs> all relative Make, yes, yeah relative. Like, yeah we'll chase some rabbits but it usually comes back to the same hole but uh <laughs> so when i got to a&m i realized two things a that i could do it because and even though it's hard i could still do it and then secondly i don't want to do this thing where i've got a uh a, a, you know hoof mark on my gut for years and years and years because i you know had a lot of that so throwing calves and stuff like that you want to do that um and so I got to A&M, you know, really learned that there was this really big world out there. There was more people in one of my freshman bio or freshman business classes than there was in my whole town. So right. as I'm walking through this thing, I'm looking at all these big buildings, <laughs> you know, and not say we weren't traveled. We went skiing and we, you know, went to different places and stuff like that. But the academic of people that were there was just mind blowing. So you're like, man, there are people that are really, really smart in this world 
I need to learn from them. And lots of them, by the way. And lots of yeah. them. And lots of them, you know. Yeah. And so, yeah, so I, I, I do the A&M thing. And, you know, I think my first semester, <laughs> I don't even know my, I don't know if the my family still knows this. I had a one four four at midterm. And I was like, whoo, <laughs> that's not passing. That is, that's, that's bad. <laughs> I had to soak this one up. And after I got that, I'm like, man, I'm going to hit it hard. I'm going to grind it, sing out. Got to learn how to do it the right way. You know, I'm going to do this. So I, I'll never, it was a biology test and I studied my, I mean, I studied and I did everything I thought I was supposed to do. Go take the test, feeling really good about it. I opened the test up and there's, there's absolutely nothing on here that I've read. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I made a 60, but after all that study and I make a 60 on this thing, mm. randomly, my dad calls me because he was working from Hearn to college station at the railroad. And so he would, you know, he, he was working for the, on the trains or stuff. So he'd, he come through, so he calls me. And he, I don't know if he, you know, if he knew. But he calls me and goes, "Hey, let's go to lunch." And okay, yeah, I need I need something right now. I need so I need to fill that tank somehow or another. And so uh, we go to lunch, and we're sitting. I'm, and I had to pick him up, and I take him back to the train. And he goes, so "What's wrong with you today?" I told him about the test, and I'm like really working my butt off, and I just don't get it. And he goes, "Hey, I knew this was going to be hard for you, and it's a good thing. You're going to grow, you know." And wow. Having that conversation with him, he's like, "This I come from Oakwood. This is going to challenge you, and you needed that." And you know, it's, it's those it's those conversations that I'll always kind of come back to. Uh, uh, you know, especially when we're having hard times with the business, you know, whatever business that may be, you right. go back and you start to relate or you know anchor back to those hard times, right? And like, okay, hey, Dad had faith in you. You know, Tudor had faith in you. These guys had faith in you. And if they got faith in you, you should be able to handle this stuff. You Maybe know? have a little faith in yourself too at the same time. <laughs> Apparently, my wife and my wife says that there's some self doubt in this household, and she has none of it when it comes to me. So <laughs> she's like, "I don't know why you keep doubting yourself. You you do a great job." So anyway, um, I got an economics degree, you know, which was you know it's kind of a poor man's business degree, I guess. But I loved economics. I kind of you know just had a, a great understanding of it, and it made sense to me. And so um, yeah, I graduated in 2007. With an economics degree. Yeah, that's great. There's a lot of other people looking for jobs in 2007 that yeah, may or may I, not have had a lot more experience than I did. Timing. So, <laughs> timing is everything. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that was great. I'm like, oh, so who is Lehman Brothers and why does this guy deserve a job over me? And they're like, well, let me tell you, you know. Uh, so I get a job at this at a, at a local bank there uh, during College Station that ended up getting bought out. And one of the things that happened with that was this guy puts he's the president of the bank. We're at this tailgate because we threw you know these great tailgates for our customers and all this wonderful stuff there at the A and M game. And we he may have had a toddy or two. I'm not going to throw that out there too much, but mm. he puts his arm around me and hey, after you graduate, I want you to come work for me. We're going to send you to school to get your master's. Oh man. I'm going to, I'm going to, sh I'm shutting it down. I'm shutting the recruitment down. Don't worry about it. It's, it's, we're committed. You know, we put it, if it would have had Twitter, we'd have put it up on Twitter. You know, Jared Moore committed, he ain't going nowhere else. Well, then, so we, you know, graduate. And that was one of the first things my dad asked me when I graduated as we're walking to the restaurant after I got my degree is, hey, so you're going to get your own insurance now? And <laughs> mm. Yeah. And you're like, oh, so I got to be a man. Perfect. Yes. Yes. So, I buy a, I buy a condo in College Station and get on get my own auto insurance. Think I'm doing something, you know. And uh, man, I'm gonna get, this guy's gonna pay for my pay for my master's degree and all this stuff. And again, all this this experience is gonna be great. Um, well, that didn't really work out that way. As as I started to learn, you know, it's like people will tell you all kinds of stuff, oh, but boy. maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. But I ended up getting a great a lot of experience there, and I worked with some wonderful people there that with lessons that have, that have kind of carried me through on, on, on how to do a look at deals. And I know it, it talks a lot about small business lending. Well, I mean, I got to see a lot of different guys doing a lot of different, I think say guys, girls, whatever you want to talk about, but you know, got to see a lot of different deals, man, this, so people can make money doing, you know, X, Y, Z. That's awesome. Oh man. Like this guy's going to go do this. This guy's, I mean, and I learned that I didn't want to be on the sidelines. Like that's one of the things I figured out. I was like, man, I, I don't, I mean, I enjoy lending money because people like you and they're really nice to you when you have, they think you have money and you know, you can lend it to them. They love you and they buy you all kinds of drinks and stuff. But you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, like you're, you're, you're doing, you're lending money and that's great. But at the same time, like being in that business and growing a business, man, that seems like a lot more fun. So um, my uncle at the time and back in 2007, uh, he was, he was a big wig with, uh, with BP. All right. So he says, Hey man, you got to get to Houston because that's where all the action is. All right. Well, he's like, I'm not going to get you a job because that's not how this thing's going to work, but I'll get you some interviews. I'll get you in the game. 
Oh, that's all I can ask for. That's that's perfect. That's what I'm looking for. Just get me in the give me an opportunity to to I mean, hell, I can I can talk for a good long time. So just just give me an opportunity. Give me the game. OK, so I, I get a job at Soul Infinity selling cars. And by the way, they would they had recruited A&M really, really heavily. So this wasn't I mean, lots of my friends give me the old used car salesman bit all the time. But, you know, this was this, these were these were highly, you know, it was a luxury car dealership. They had they were wildly successful. Um, Carl Soul wrote. I mean, and I say he wrote the book on customer service. He actually did write a book on customer service. But it is I mean, and it's something that you can take across the board from, you know, whether it's cars, insurance, money, doesn't matter if you're selling something and you can you, know, you can work like he does or work like that, that customer service side. You won't go wrong. So anyway, so I learned a ton, got thick skin because selling cars is not fun. Um, but like I said, my uncle's like, no, 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 this is going to be great for you. You'll get some sales experience and then you can move down here. I'll get you these interviews. All right, great. Well, three weeks, three weeks later, I quit my job. Um, you know, I was like, all right, put my two weeks in. I'm going to take this other thing. And uh, three weeks later, the BP oil spill happens. So oh, all those boy, people that... Are just <laughs> Remind, yeah. me, remind me never to go on vacation with you, Jerry. Just, <laughs> no, no, no. The good thing is, is when you see me leaving, you should leave too. Okay, like, <laughs> that, that's the signal. That is the signal. I now okay, know that it. when the when crap's about to hit the fan, you don't stand in front of the fan anymore. You move right or left. Where's, where's Jared? That's the question. Where is Jared? Okay. Yeah, stand on the good. side with him. He usually gets out at the right side. So not always, but sometimes I do. You know. Got it. It's, <laughs> And, and, you know, honestly, at that bank, I, I, I'll never forget, I was looking at the a so a &M runs like this uh, statistics, okay, after your graduation, for your graduating class, okay, so it has like the mean, the median, the mode, the high, the low for salaries, just different stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking through this thing, you know, one day, and it's there be before I quit the job there at the bank, and the low was $27,000. I was like, wait, I make $27,000. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. That, that was me. Okay. I was like, no, this will not work. Like, you know, my of course, my dad's like, hey, you can make that as a prison guard and then you don't even have to go to college. I'm like, well, that's not really the way I'm going to go with this thing. But, um, you know, so that's where it was like, man, this little, like, this little thing's offering some more money. I can learn and be off during the week. And then, of course, BP happens. So um, that didn't deter me. We're going to keep doing what we're doing. We're going to keep trying to find that career path that we're looking for right now. In my twenties, I really focused a lot on how do I get more skills that are going to be marketable? How do I get skills that are going to be hireable? Um, you know, but at the end of the, but realistically, I, was, I wanted to own my own business. Yeah. You know, I wanted to be my own boss. I, I do better that way. So, so one day I'm sitting at my desk and this tall, bald dude walks in and I'm like, ah, maybe he's going to buy a car. So I, I, I up him as what they call the car dealership world. All right. So this guy turns out to be Paul Clark and he walks in and he's got this tear out from a magazine. He goes, I want this deal. Okay. <laughs> we'll give you that deal. <laughs> you can probably do a better deal, but we'll give you that deal. Uh, and, he walked, uh, wait a minute. He walked in with a tear out from a magazine. Yeah, that's how, he, that's how he started the deal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, it was easy because he's like, I want the convertible. I want okay. it black. I want it, you know, this. So it was this just, is the, this is the deal I want. All right, man, I'll do that deal for you all day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm going to have to ask he, Paul about that, Jay. Oh, <laughs> he asked me after I was employed by him, did I get a good deal? I'm like, you got the deal you wanted. <laughs> that's exactly what you got. You got the deal you asked for. That's where we're going to go with that. You know, of course, I couldn't mm -hmm. say anything because he's still signing my checks at the time. Of course. So, <laughs> of course. Had to be kind of had to be a little uh, more diplomatic about it. But, um, you know, so we, we, we do that. So we sell Paul a car and, and then I'm checking on some ads one day and I see like there's a financial analyst position in the Woodlands. That's right up my alley. So I reach out to that, that posting and it turns out it was Paul. And he go and I send him my resume and he goes, he says some stuff like setting up the interview and he goes, by the way, you're the guy that sold me the car. We're like, oh, all right. Or right, you sold me a car a couple weeks ago. I'm like, oh, perfect. I hope I did a good job. <laughs> yeah, that would be important right about it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of those things where that sales training really kicked in. Thank goodness. So, um, you know, I go, I, I go interview with these guys, and it was one of those things where I was having to switch. I think we were summer attire there at Soul Infinity, and so I was, I would go through the drive-through at Whataburger and putting on my suit to go interview with Paul, so they wouldn't know that anything was really up. And then, you know, now I don't have any jobs. So. Um, uh, wow. Yeah, those guys, it was, I, I learned real quick, man, these guys are really smart. These guys sound like they know what they're doing. And then I interview with the president, like the second interview was with a guy named Fred DeRoad, who was the former CEO and founder of PPC. 
And Fred comes in this boardroom, he kicks his feet up on the desk and he goes, Jared, here's the thing. If this shit ain't working out, we'll tell you go find something else to do. And if it does, great. But I don't need your grocery money. And I know you're not going to make me any for a while. So that's kind of how this thing's going to go. Wow. It, this, is, <laughs> this is who? Who is this? That's how so this, this was this was Fred DeRoe. This was the uh, former CEO and president of PPC. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. this was the job I wanted, right? Like, okay. this is, this is, this is, man, that's kind of scary. You know, hey, so we so start. If, if he sees you later, <laughs> fine. If he doesn't see you later, fine. Then you go ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, there, well, there were 15 people in there, you know, okay. so it wasn't like this, this, this huge company. And he go, yeah, he just pops his feet up and he's like, yes, we're going to tell you it's not working out. Go find something else to do if it's not. And so you kind of had this nagging fear in the back of your mind a lot of times as a 25 year old dude, like, all right, now, how do I make all this work together? 24 hour roll Um, And so I, I got to really understand a lot about how a highly engineered process works in niche lend or realistically niche anything, right? So they did niche lending, but learning how to get into niches and being the guy or being the expert in that niche can be a very lucrative deal, right? And so these guys had figured out, you know, with the, they started out with the dental loans and man, you know, there's these practices are worth a lot more than what a bank will lend against them because a bank's going to turn around and say, all right, we've got a hundred thousand in equipment. So we're, we'll lend you $75,000 to, for this practice. We're like, well, the practice is throwing off $900,000 a year in revenue and doing $400,000 in, you know, EBITDA. So it'll service this debt a little bit more. And they, so they figured that out and they started learning like, man, well, it's not the collateral that's going to pay you back. It's the man or it's the person that's operating this business, you know? Yeah. So, um, so Jared, I have to ask you a question because shoot. you have, I mean, as you're, as you're chronicling, you know, the, this is uh, this journey that you've been on. I, I'm sure how many people, I'm not sure how many people, but I'm certain a bunch of people caught that. that you're only at 25 at this point. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that you have been thrown a couple of curveballs by this mm -hmm. time. So mm -hmm. now I've met Paul. I know Jay's known Paul for a really long time. And the, the quality guy that he is, and the fact that you guys have worked together says a lot about both of you. But I tell you what keeps coming to mind for me, and I actually wrote it down. I, you have a new acronym that is going to be pop culture is going to be associated with you, uh, Jared. It's, Perfect. Uh, DCK is what it is. I'm calling it DCK. That's the double calf kick. So because uh, you got a double calf kick there that kind of took the wind out of your sails. Mm -hmm. So. Up until this time, between uh, because I, we haven't talked about Allstate and Aqua Aces and being able to mm -hmm. do that kind of stuff. In that very formative time of your life, mm -hmm. uh, besides the literal double calf kick that happened when you were trying <laughs> to get, get them on the scale, what was what was your biggest uh, moment where you were just like, "Holy crap, this is just." Because uh, you mentioned, you know, going to school and kind of having your bell rung with the fact that you mm -hmm. were used to being the smartest guy in the room. And all of a sudden, the room is bigger than your whole town. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the folks that watch this actually are in, you know, they're, we've got a lot of 20 year old, 30 year olds, a lot of folks your age. Mm -hmm. What is it? What do you think your biggest, um, what upset your, what was your biggest upset of Apple Cart up to this point? And how'd you twist it to keep going forward? So I got, so it kind of goes back into the first thing that really in those formative years, the, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sound a little dramatic here for a That's second, okay. but, okay. Okay but the that. first, the first woman that's supposed to love me for my entire life blows out on me and gets involved in a lot of stuff. Right. So mm -hmm. as, as, so not having that mother, you know, it's essentially kind of like, you know, like, Hmm, everybody else has got one. Yeah, I don't, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But if that was, if this is how bad it can get, you know, or if this is how bad it is, you know, we're never, and I was growing up in trailer houses and trailer parks and stuff like that. I was growing up in a trailer house. I lived in one in college and all that stuff. But like, we were living in trailer parks and, and, you know, the, so this one stepdad I had, you know, I'm sitting there. It was my job when I got home every day in third grade was to feed the horses, the, all the animals, horses, the horse, the chickens, the da 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 da. And so I did all that one afternoon. I'll never, you know, and you see, so you're sitting there and I'm reading, I'm doing my homework. Well, I didn't have any chicken feed. 
there and, I, and, and they don't let me drive at second grade or third grade, you know. And so I'm sitting at the bar doing my homework and this guy comes in and he kicks the bar stool out from under me and, you know, commences to you know treat me like a little bit of a punching bag. So I learned and I survived it. Right. You know, and, and, and my mindset and the apple cart for me was always in this kind of this is kind of a reoccurring theme in my life yeah. was I'm going to get bigger okay. and I'm going to get better and I'm going to find you. And okay. and then that's that. Now that's what's going to you know, then we'll see what's up because you're real good. You're 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 real handsy with the you know, with the third grader. Let's say, hey, do when I'm a grown up. That guy ended up passing away. The good Lord took care of me on that one. He's like, yeah, I don't want you finding him later. But, um, you know, so, but it goes back into like, it's, man, that was, that was bad. Like that, you know, looking back, I'm like, that's not how it's supposed to happen. They're like, yeah. no, no, nobody comes in and kicks out a bar stool for because there was no chicken feed for you to feed the chickens. Right. Yeah. Um, and so all through, you know, even until that point of like, you know, <laughs> graduating in 2007 with an economics degree. I didn't look at it as I was graduating in the middle of a recession, even though it sucked as far as job opportunities were concerned for me and, and trying to do the, the things that I wanted to do. But at the same time, it was like, I'm not getting a, I'm not getting a barstool kicked out from under me because I'm not big enough to go drive and get chicken feed. Right. Got it. Got it. So yeah. you had taken, you had taken, you figure you had taken some of the biggest blows already. If you could survive, yeah. survive, that. survive some of that, you know, and yeah. you're, you know, walking, you know, walking that mile of the, it's, it's like, that was probably in my lifetime. I'll, I'll say this is when I was walking with my sisters, because it's not just me, it's my two sisters, right? Like, you know, we got, they're, they're small. They don't know. Um, couldn't leave them by themselves. That was probably one of the scaredest I've ever been. Right. Like, and that's 36 years, you know, or like however, 30, you know, 30 years later or whatever it was like, yeah, but I'm, we're still not, we're still not getting bar stools kicked out. We're still not having to walk a mile in the dark because, we don't have a flashlight or anything like that. We're just hoping, you know, the moon's going to give us enough light. You hear those hogs, you hear, you hear those animals scattering about, you know, and you're like, man, this is, this is scary, but we made it. And we and kept what, going. And whatever else you face, it wasn't that. Yeah, it wasn't that. Yeah. It was, yeah. you know, whether it's, whether it's getting, you know, hammered on by two calves, you know, or, and that's, and that's kind of always been the thing, right? Like I look at the, those two calves, man, that's, that hurt and it didn't feel good. But when I played football, you know, that that guy that was, you know, this all district running back that I now had to tackle. I was like, <laughs> this is this is easy. Two days for me were were kind of a break because it was like I got to go to work after this. So <laughs> this is this is not hard. So, you know, like like I said, those are those anchor points that I try to go back to and think about when whenever we have these, you know, setbacks, moments of failure, whatever we call it. It's still not that bad. Right. Mm -hmm. Like my kids are healthy. My wife is, you know, I've got my health. Like even you start going in like, it's, it's, you know, I can always make more money. I can always do these things, but you know, I'm never going to, I'm never going to have to walk a mile with my two little sisters in the dark, mm -hmm. you know, with some, with some kit, with some kitchen knives and hope kitchen that, knives. you know, we don't get eat by a damn hog or a, a panther. There was a panther down there and that is freaky, but. <laughs> Jared, you know, Jared, I, I think, you know, for the people listening, I think a lot of people and, and, you know, if we're able to look in the mirror and get rid of our ego, a lot of people see a lot of those things that happen in our life and mm -hmm. become a victim of it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I also grew up uh, with a father that was very, very hard, very, mm -hmm. very strict um, and very l limiting in his mindset. And. I, you know, I chose to look at that as a gift mm -hmm. um, because I didn't want to be that. Right. And I think that's mm -hmm. what you've done is you've taken all of these things that have happened to you. But a lot of people listening have a hard time doing that. Right. Because they sulk yeah. in the moment of failure. They sulk in the moment of, you know, trying to get better. And I think that is one of the mm -hmm. keys to success is, I mean, I mean, tying getting kicked by two calves to the all district lining back. Uh, all district running back and being like, this is easy. Like mm -hmm. most people don't have that. And I think that's, you know, what most people, if you could do that and say, man, I went through this, this is easy, but you know, sometimes we're scarred mm -hmm. and it's like, we don't want to get kicked again, you know, because mm -hmm. we remember it being so bad, but it really wasn't that bad. So I'm, I'm glad you, you shared that. So let me, let me ask you this. <laughs> uh, I, I'm used to the sign language now on Zoom, dude. It's really, really we, we see it every <laughs> podcast. I've got, a, I've got a six year old that's trying to come get a Jolly Rancher. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, not now. That's not yeah, the time. Yeah. No, you got to say hi to people if you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, success. 
when you were in college, you know, getting your master's success at PPC, when, you know, someone, I mean, basically what drove you is people telling you they didn't need you and you're like, oh no, you need me. You know, I'm going to prove you wrong. And I think that's, that's another gear that unsuccessful people don't have that I also have, right? Tell me yeah. something's impossible and yeah. I'm going to show you that you're dead wrong. So Absolutely. success today, you know, as you are 38, did you say 38, 36, 36, 36. Mm -hmm. today at 36, success means something different to you than when you were in college or when you were walking with your sisters. So today, mm -hmm. what is your definition of success? Like, and then and then I want you to just go 10 years further and say, today, my definition is this. This is what I see success for my life. And then 10 years from now, where do you see your life and how are you going to get there? So success a lot of, for me, and it's, it's going to vary for everybody, right? So part of, my, part of success is this one right here, right? Like this is her. You know, it's one of my nice. six-year-olds. She's, she's six going on 60. It's That's fine. Awesome. You I'm know. six. I'm not I'm five. That's, oh, she's about to be. She's about to be five. Oh, okay. um, you know, for me, the, the one resource that I know that I've got a finite amount of amount of is time, mm -hmm. right? Like I, I, my dad worked a lot, like for the railroad, but he always still, he tried to find time for me and all that stuff. Uh, you know, my time with these kids, like she's only going to be five once. She's only be six once. And my son's, you know, he's only going to play, you know, he's, he's only going to be 14. You know, he played his last night of uh, little league a couple of days ago, you know, as far as baseball is concerned. So my version of success right now is being able to, A, of course, provide for them and provide them in a lot better start than maybe what I started with. Because if we can improve our start, then, you know, even if we run three miles, like, but, you know, kind of kind of figure out like, oh, man, like if I put them in a better position, maybe they run four miles, maybe they run five miles. Um, but it's to be around them. You know, a lot of it is is having that freedom and the autonomy to if I'm if I need to cut loose and, and go to to my son's, you know, he was all A's this year, so he gets a little award and we got to go to the award ceremony, then we're gonna go to the award ceremony. Um, you know, I mean that's and that's that's a lot of it for me because I value my time, I value <clears throat> you know, I value my I mean that's it's a lot of this is it's like you said, like time I get to I have to create, right? And so I wanna have that freedom to do that. And I wanna be able to build businesses and you know, if we sell businesses, we sell them, but at the same time, you know, knowing that we're going to have some success in there. I mean, is that the, so from the business standpoint, it's more like, does this business run without me? You know, does, do I have to be involved in every decision? Because if I am, then I don't have a business. I have a job. I don't want a job. I mean, I can go get a job. I mean, they say it's easy enough. I want a bit, I want, I want these businesses that we build, that we do these things with to have such good processes and such good staff that it doesn't take me to be there on the day to day. Right. Like it's I'm more directional, you know, oversight, strategic direction, whatever you want to call it, to use those fancy words that like Allstate likes to use on that stuff. And that's where whereas my guys and my staff are, are realistically they're making good money and they're doing all the things that make that, you know, make that apple cart go down the road. Um, and then, then it's more of like, hey, you know, this was thrown our way. How do we handle this? Or, you know, hey, we need to, you know, with the, with the Aqua Aces deal, it's, hey, we might need some new equipment. We might need this. We might need that. Um, you know, and so me, helping me, me helping make those decisions and, and being like, all right, we're going to take this to this level. You know, we're going to go out, we're going to purchase this business because it's, an, uh, it's a, you know, it's a complimentary business that I think is going to get us into a lot of doors that maybe it didn't before. And that was where like the all service striping thing came in as far as the, you know, Aqua Aces. We started out with just a truck because I, I was, like I said, sitting here with my wife and she's like, go find something to do. You are worrying about not having anything to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, you know what? That's there are a lot of people though. That's not a, that really is not uncommon. Uh, mm -hmm. being, and you know, we've talked before about um, the idea. In fact, we were reading this, um, trying to remember which book we were in in the book club, Jay, about being stuck versus being stalled, and mm -hmm. kind of uh, almost like you know, I'm, I'm getting a great workout on this treadmill, but. But I'm a, I'm in exactly the same room I was when I got on it and started running. <laughs> yeah. um, so you know, but I think what what you're saying is really important for us to kind of draw out for the people that are watching, the people that are listening, because you actually said it away in a way, uh, Jared, that I don't know that anybody else hasn't. We a lot of the folks we've had on here, really smart folks, including you, not you know, because I know you you are kind of, uh, uh, well, not kind of, really humble, but talk about the fact 
with that, you know, you want a business, not a job. Like mm-hmm. that's an interesting statement to hear because it's I a lot of people think of them as the same thing. And if mm-hmm. you think of them the same thing, you'll build them that way. So you'll mm-hmm. build yourself a, you know, a business that takes up 60 hours of your time, you know, mm-hmm. until you're 70 years old. And yeah. did you really have a business or did you just have a glorified job? Exactly. Um, but one of the other things that you said that uh, I thought was incredibly vulnerable uh, for you to say, but I think people can connect to it. And Jay mentioned this a little earlier is, you know, people very often say, you know, I grew up in a, you know, it was a rough situation. Um, and, you know, my back was against the wall with this. It wasn't fair. Uh, but you said something that I don't know that anyone said exactly that way. And you said, it made me angry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and I, you know, it's, I don't know why it struck me that you said that, but I think <laughs> that is helpful for people mm-hmm. to hear that not only uh, is do our people who are people who are successful, you know, had it had, you know, an unfair I'm doing air quote starts here, you know, air, air quotes here, uh, but that it did piss you off yeah. and that that it gave you an edge that kind of, you know, because uh, I heard it in the, you know, the bar stool story. It's like, mm-hmm. OK, all right. I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I know I, you know, it's almost like, you know, Jared Moore's uh, Bruce Banner has turned in <laughs> the Hulk is the businessman that you've turned into. But, you know, uh, you know, my I'm a big Avengers fan, so I make too many references mm-hmm. to it. But one of the lines in one of the first uh, movies was, you know, you know, Dr. Banner would be a good now be a good time to get angry. And his mm-hmm. his response was. I'm always angry. I'm always angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but you have figured out how to channel that in a positive way that pushes you forward. So football was really key in that, right? Because football was this, and I and I wasn't a I wasn't a pretty boy, you know. I was I was a linebacker and an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman. So I like to hit people, and so I figured out. Wait, the harder I hit somebody, the the, the louder the crowd cheers, and I don't get in trouble for this. <laughs> We might be <laughs> onto something here. We might be onto something. <laughs> Got but it. I had this this ball of you know, and at that point it was a very that I talk, I still kind of talk about the ball, but the ball then was very very different. That was in my chest or in my you know whatever you want to call it. It was a lot. It was a lot more unfocused, a lot okay. more raw. You know, like I, I'm mad. I know kind of. I'm pretty sure I know why I'm mad. Um, this poor unfortunate soul that I'm about to light up, you know, is going to feel how mad I am. But I learned like, man, I can use that. I can channel that. Now I can, it's a, it was all, it's a very dangerous thing. It's like Star Wars. You're starting to talk, type into the, the dark side, right? Like mm-hmm. you don't want to do that. You know, you'll start shooting lightning out of your hands, which maybe that's cool. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> but I, I learned, it was like, cause it can also be a, something that's, it's, you can, it can consume you. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so anything, but any of it can, you know, and that's, and that was the thing is, is there was times when it would, you figure out like, Oh, I can't, I can't go that deep. I can't go that hot. I can't go that dark, whatever you want to call it. You know, whatever the wording is like, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, this is what I have and I know how to make this propel me. But is this really, you know, the motivation that I need? So the motive, so to kind of go to, to Jay's question, you know, as far as like, so 10 years ago, that ball of energy and success and all this other stuff was like this, you know, like, oh, we're going to do this. Like the first bonus I got from Allstate was six figures. And I'd never even had that much money in my bank account before. And I was like, wait, we still miss something. You know, like I could have done better, you know. So it was like, let's keep climbing, you know. Um, and then and then you learn like that, that, so that anger and that, well, maybe that shouldn't necessarily just be anger. Maybe it's, you know, I and mean, it definitely shouldn't be fear. You know, it's mm. there's there's going to be fear. Like I'm there's a lot of times I've, whew, I do not know if this is the right decision. But we're going to go with it anyway, <laughs> and because I make yeah. the decision based on the information that I have at the time, right? Um, and everybody could see, oh well, you know, two months, two weeks, two years, whatever. And you look back and go, well, that was a really crappy decision. Yeah, but at the time, I didn't really. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Like, oh yeah, well, now looking at it this end, but you know, going back to like being twenty five and, and and at twenty five or twenty six is when I bought that first agency or those two agencies. So when Paul, Mac, and Fred are you know we're talking about this thing, and they're like, all right, so you're gonna it's going to be about $1.3 million is how much we're going to spend. And I'm like, what? 
And how much is the monthly payment on that? They're like, that's about 13 grand. I was like, Whoo, I do not have the payment. And they're like, no, it's going to be fine. You know, and I understood the economics of this, of these things and how well they work together. And, and, you know, you get in, you show a little interest, you reinvest and you do the things that you know you should do and, and the business can turn around. But at 25, I was yeah. like, whoo, like, ah, this could really, really, you know, hamstring me going forward if I don't make if this thing doesn't work out right. And me and my wife, and we choose my girlfriend at the time, and I'll and I'll be honest, we were in a in a, a little bit of a spat. Uh, I would sometimes have a way of saying things that I shouldn't say. I don't know if, if you guys ever experienced that with your wives, never, um, never. and mm, never happens. Never. And so, me and her were we were not real. She was not real happy with me, and she wasn't really talking to me. So I had to reach out through like AOL Messenger or something because it's not like she was taking my calls. Like I was like, Emily, let me let me let me drop there. It's like you got mail. I said, hey, look, I've been presented with this opportunity. I know you're really pissed at me right now, and I get it, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll pay that piper later, but I need to be able to talk to you right now. And she's like, well, give me a call. And she put the sword down. She put her shield down, and she's like, okay, let's think through this. We talked about it. And she's like, well, you got to do it. It's like, when the night you met me, you told me you're going to own your own company, you know, and this is, this is an opportunity for that. So go for it, you know? And then she's like, and on another thing, I was like, whoa, wait, hey, this is breaking up. I got to go. <laughs> You heard the sword getting picked up again. Yeah, yeah, you know, and when she, when she, yeah. Anytime she says something to the effect of like, "Do you want to know how I feel?" It's not how it is. I, it's not how she feels. It's every way that I've been screwing up here lately. So, <laughs> but, totally, totally yeah. get it. Totally so, get it. But to end, it, so you know, right now my success for me is, hey, we have we have money in the bank. We have, you know, the bills are getting paid. We're able to go to the kids' functions. The kids are able to do, you know, if they want to do extracurricular, for whatever they're doing, you know, we get involved with that and help them out on there. We're able to bless others. And that's a big thing in our family is, is if God, you know, if you, if you receive blessings or if God blesses you, you bless others. And so that's a lot of, you know, a lot of what we try to focus on now. And, and it's crazy when I sometimes just the thought, process, like a couple of weeks ago, um, I did something that was going to be a blessing for other people. We don't, I don't talk about it or whatever. I, you know, made a, made a donation or something. Um, the next day we got a $60,000 contract, you know, for wow. rock Oasis, Right. And so I'm not saying that I, that I did what I did to, to get money. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I, yeah. you know, I blessed, I, you know, took my, took my blessings and I tried to bless other people. And then, you know, then a blessing came to me the next day. That was, you know, a hundred times, what I did. Right. And so, you know, having that mindset and that leadership and that, you know, especially as a leader of having that more, you know, Hey, I want to be a blessing to others and I want to, and I want to learn from people. Um, you know, and I think as I get older, so to kind of go to that 10 year thing, you know, my, my daughter will be 15. So she's almost out of high school in 10 years. I mean, then it's, then, then it's going to look a lot different. You know, maybe it's, the wife doesn't work anymore. She loves to work. So I don't know how long, how long that'll apply. But maybe it's me and her traveling and doing stuff with the kids out of school, you know, and where, especially with today's economy and the things that we've had today, I mean, we can work from anywhere. So maybe it's more travel, you know, but it will, but I feel like it'll always be more like, let's build these businesses and in those businesses, let's give people an opportunity to grow within them. And then they can do some of this, you know, if they want to, if they want to advance and go past their own start, let's help them. You know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not scared to train somebody and get them to where they want to be, right? Not just where I want them to be, but where they want to be, because it's a lot different. A lot of times. That's telling you. Yeah, that's well. It, the your your blessing. Your your it's a blessing to be a blessing to someone else. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a person of great faith as well, and uh, every time you kind of get out of the way, so to speak, is what my um, <laughs> what my elders would say. When mm -hmm. you get out of the way, uh, it is it finds its way back to you. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's uh, not Jay is probably catching that this is I know everybody listening is that how when you said success is basically freedom we've talked mm -hmm. the, the last two or three folks that we talked to it's it's you know most people say financial freedom and that's kind of the terminology they use but really mm -hmm. it's freedom to mm -hmm. to do if you decide right this moment that I'm going to go do something that you can do it and not really feel as though the house of cards is going to fall because you're not there doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but that is also part of having the right team and hiring the right mm -hmm. people and that kind of thing. So um, the, 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 this is laced with humility, Jared. Oh, <laughs> it is laced with humility. Uh, and that's, a, that's, that's a great thing. That's a <laughs> well, great thing. it's 
they would say, yeah, I need to, I, I, that's something I always work on is, or I try to work on a lot as my grandmother, would, as Nana would say, you need to be a lot more humble, babe. And I'm like, I'm working on it, I'm working on it, but we get there. Right. I mean, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, no, it's a, uh, it's a yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always striving to do a little bit better. Right. I mean, it's, and it's personally, professionally, you know, spiritually, and I fall short a lot. I mean, hell, there's days I'm like, man, I need to drink, I need to drink, you know, way more water. So I'm going to drink three of these and I get two and a half in and you know, stuff happens. Or I need to read my devotional, read my Bible. I need to make sure I make time for God, make time, make time for the kids, make time for the wife. And there's so many different things in the day. And that's why I talk about like the only resource that I don't have access to is time. I mean, I have it, but it's a finite. It's never coming back. You know, I will never get yesterday back. If I miss if I miss a football game for my kids or if I miss a, a, a tumbling deal or whatever, you know, she's into at the, that time. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go and get that back. Now, there's you know, I'm not have to be I don't have to be at every practice or anything of that nature. But, you know, those my, my I looked at my dad and I looked my stepmom never missed it, never missed a ball game. You know, she never did. And that was one of those things that I always I take into 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 account. Right. And so I because I, I look for it. And in the middle of a football field, all this chaos going on, there was only two people that I could ever hear. And one was my coach, was, and he was the defensive coach, and the other one was my stepmom. You know, and he, <laughs> wow. You know, I could, I, that's that's who I would. Hear. You know, she's just like most of the time it was something along the lines of uh, get your head in the game or something of that nature, or go get them or something like that. But I could hear that. And so for my kids, it's important for me to be there for them because we're, we're establishing paradigms and we're trying to do better than what, you know, we, we started with. And we didn't have a bad start, but my wife is, she came from a, you know, home that there were some issues there, you know, separations and things like that. So our focus is a lot of times on is our kid with our kids is, Hey, let's give them that. Let's give them that start because they're going to take us, you know, they're going to, well, for one, hopefully they take care of me. They'll definitely take care of her because they love her. But, um, you know, <laughs> but you know, it's, that's, that's our, that's our legacy, you know, is our children and how, and how well they do. I mean, not how well they do necessarily, but how, you know, I say well, well is relative, but how well adjusted they are, or how, you know, how happy they are in life. And that's, what's important to me. My grandpa that passed away a couple of years ago said, son, I don't care if you dig ditches, just as long as you're happy, you know? And that's uh, and that's, and that's for me, happiness and success equal, you know, more time and more freedom to do, you know, if I want to go, if I want to leave after this podcast and go play 18 holes of golf, I'll, you know, it's, I want that, I want that, uh, yeah, that available to me. Okay. So, so, so Jared, let's talk about legacy for a second. Um, mm-hmm. Being that you're, you know, your kids are so important and I get that because I have, I have um, two precious young girls um, that uh, I, they're angels, angels that I, I adore more than anything in this world. And, you know, I have a, an older daughter of 27, but I was not at a place in my life uh, when she was born that I was, uh, uh, selfless. Um, I was very selfish, uh, with her. And, and then I had these two little girls that now have changed my life forever. And I want to leave a legacy. You know, my mm-hmm. wife and I talked about, I don't want to leave t- like just a money legacy, but I want to also mm-hmm. leave a psychological legacy and a mentality legacy and a mindset mental uh, legacy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if, if something were to happen to you tomorrow, Jared, mm-hmm. and you said so you have a 14 year old and a five year old, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. What what would what would be three things that you would want to leave with your kids and you be known for through them that they would live their life by? So one, and these are in no particular order. Um, the, the definitely the five, you know, the five, the five, yeah, five P's, which is proper preparation prevents piss poor performance, right? Like that's that's a big one. You know, you can. Showing up to stuff, showing up to a test at AM is not always going to cut it. You know, sometimes putting, you know, or being on a podcast, maybe you want to listen to a couple of the episodes, you know, type out some notes. I did all those things, by the way. So say, say that again proper <laughs> preparation for piss poor performance. Proper prevent. preparation prevents piss poor performance. Okay. okay. Like it. All right. You know, do what you say you're going to do. Uh, it's so simple, but it's mm. such a big deal. It's it, it it's it's crazy the amount of if like if people would do that, you know, a little bit more. Like how many more people I would you know not have to fire. Um, you, you know, you know, you know where people should start though, Jared. What's that? If people would just do what they say they're going to do for themselves. Mm-hmm. Like just yeah. start there. Most people let themselves down. 
right? Yeah. I mean, like start with being a man or woman of your word to yourself, mm -hmm. you know, because if you can't do that, you're never going to be able to do it for other people. And most people can't, Absolutely. you know, most people, like you said, I'm going to drink three things of water. I'm going to work out. I'm going to do these. And most mm -hmm. people fail when they make that promise. I, I, I like that's. I think that's really, really key. That's a great one. And what's the third? So kind of got two here, but like one is you can't be led by fear. Fear cannot be your overall. You know, my wife says all the time that fear and love are, are the two of the most powerful motivators that people experience. And in, in, in some way, shape, form or fashion, you know, those are the two That's things that motivate people, yep. you know. And so fear, it's, you know, you could use the office quote, you know, I want to be feared, but scared. I want people to be scared about how much they love me. You know, but realistically, if you're if you're going by fear, then you're probably going to be more reactive. Right. If you're going, if you're being led by fear, it's oh my gosh, that happened. We got to do this. Well, that's you know, that's that's typically not the best case to make a decision with. So don't be led by fear. It's not. It's you know, you make the info. You, you have to be to an extent confident enough in your own in your own mind to know that this is the decision I made and this is why I made that decision. And there's a lot of decisions that I've made over over my over my career that have not been the right ones, but I learned from them on the back end too. Right, and that's. And that's what's, you know, that's really one of the reasons why I think I've been, you know, and I, I say successful, but, you know, that's relative, but is, hey, let's learn from where we went wrong. Where did we go wrong? What happened? And was it a bad idea? Was it bad execution? Was it bad, you know, what, what, or was it just bad timing? You know, I mean, hell, BP oil spill happens three weeks after I moved to Houston. Are you serious? You know, but my alternative, I could cry. I could be upset. I could get my sock drawer and just hope it all goes away. Or, just get after it. And that's, I mean, I mean, that's what I ask some of these guys, you know, when business is going wrong for them or business is going bad, I'm like, well, what's your alternative? What are you going to do? You, just, you know, you, you, you've got an issue. Everybody has it. <laughs> what are All we right. going to do to fix it and move on? You know, and that kind of goes into the next one. And that's the last one, but that's, it's picking partners, right? Like, and, and that's not just in business. That's the, the, and I probably got, I'll probably have partners that are mad at me, but the best partner I've ever picked was my wife. And that because she has rode, she's rode the river with me. She's been through there thick and thin. She's, you know, she's a good has woman. She, has she been in the river with all the little pesky stuff in the bottom or What's that? all those little <laughs> creatures in the bottom? She's, she's been in the river with you with all those. She, things? she, she's a, you know, uh, she's not a big camper and stuff. Like she, I think she's, what was it? And it was like, you know, camping is a tradition of my family. And she's like, yeah, it's a tradition. A lot of people's family before they had houses, you know? So, <laughs> But no, she sounds is, she sounds wise. I'm gonna use that one actually because my <laughs> wife my wife my wife actually likes to go camping or she likes to call it glamping. Uh -huh. And that and I'm just like, well, we could do that on the boat. Yeah. Because that's pretty yeah. close to camping, but a lot better. Yes. She's like, yeah. But it's not it's not camping. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's Dang. why that was that was what they did a long time ago when they didn't have wood and roofs. Like yeah. <laughs> we've evolved. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to do that anymore. It's right. great. <laughs> I, I have a sunlight. I, I have a sunroof. I can see the stars from right here. <laughs> I can pop like, these blinds. I can see go. outside. It's great. It's it's hot. That's what it is. So no, but, but that no. She's you know, like like I said with the Allstate agency. You know, she was mad. I mean, she had every right to be. I probably didn't say some nice things, or, or I really it's more stupid things that I say. Um, I'm typically not very hurtful because you know fear, and Six. I don't want to wake up and her beat me. So, so Jared, she's you, me. you said one thing. Um, it's it's funny when people, and you're very humble talking about success, and you know you're like um, success, but it's relative, and and that's the cool thing about success is it is relative to what you want success, and that's why we do this podcast because success is a snowflake. It's different for every single person, and I think what we get caught up in is comparing our success to other people's success when it doesn't matter, right? Like your success, yes. your success is if I want to go play 18 holes or I want to go to my daughter's concert or I want to go to my son's baseball game, like that, that people that don't have kids don't understand that. Cause I didn't mm -hmm. before I had kids. Mm -hmm. Right. But now for yeah. me, it's like being able to be there when my daughter wakes up, when she goes to sleep, when she's crying, when, whatever, I want to be there at all times. And this pandemic has made me realize, man, I've missed a lot of stuff being in the office mm -hmm. all of the time. So yeah. I, I, I for the you know when you kind of drew back on there you have success or you wouldn't be on here um because right. when i asked paul um i want to talk to somebody really successful that has a great head your your name popped in his head he said you need to talk to jim yeah. he's a unique guy he's done a lot of great things like he's funny he's going to be a great a great guy so 
I just, you know, people listening, I think the key is, you know, you're going to fail, but yeah. failing is success because you did yes. something. And then yes. what you said at the end was you got to just learn from your mistakes. And I think that's what people don't do. They mm -hmm. don't learn because of that pain that you talked about earlier that you turned into, listen, if I can have two steers kick me in my ribs, <laughs> this 200 pound weakling that thinks he's a badass, I'm going to take him down. Like he didn't even see me coming. Right. And, yeah. and, and you're able to, right. Because you're going mm -hmm. into it with a different mindset and success is all about here. And mm -hmm. you can't compare your success to someone else. I mean, we can compare wallets, but I mean, yeah, but I, I'm at my, my, mental wallet with my kids is way bigger than yours, right? You have oh, yeah. no idea. So, so I'm, I'm, I just, I kind of wanted to go back to that because I felt you'd be like, well, success is relative. It is relative, mm -hmm. but I, I guarantee you there's a lot of people that want to be in your shoes. So there's that a guy, have that freedom. Yeah. And so there's, so the guy that I kind of modeled my, when I, when I was in college, you know, and, and he was in the family at that point and, and that's kind of what we'll leave it. But, you know, there was this, he, he was really successful in my mind, right? He had a, a really big house. He had a lake house. He's got, you know, he's got some boats. He's got, you know, the cool cars. His wife doesn't work. I like, hey, man, this is, that's, that's, this is why I'm going to college. This is what I want to do. All right. Well, a couple of years, so a couple of years ago, it finds out that maybe this guy's been, you know, kind of you know, stepping out on his wife, you know, maybe his, and his kids aren't really that appreciative of him, you know, because he's never around. And, you know, you turn, it turns out that all of that money, and all that booze and the women and you know whatever else that he was trying to fill that hole with, it, it you know I didn't want it. It was like that doesn't you know yeah he's got some of the things that I would like to have, but that's not even with all that money I don't want it. I don't. That's not the life I want for my family. That's not the life I want for my kids. You know to see dad you know step out and, and because our kids emulate us, right? I mean sure. that's what there's a reason why if your parents smoke, you're what sixty six percent, seventy five percent more likely to smoke if your parents smoke, you know, or or however whatever that percentage, is. Um, you know. And so I, you see that, and that 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 was a that was a big impact for me of, of like, hey, this is the guy that's supposed to be the alpha success. This is what I'm trying to mirror my career after. Or, you know, those are the the benchmarks that I'm trying to hit. Maybe right. I don't want to hit those anymore. Maybe it's maybe I'm maybe I'm doing this and looking at this thing the wrong way. And I read a book called Unf Yourself. You can kind of figure out what the F is. Oh, and yeah. it talked a lot about expectations, right? Like, and so you have these expectations in your mind. You have these expectations of what it should be. Well, what if what you think it should be is not as good as what it could be? You know, and that's and that's a lot. And that was that was a big turn. That was a big book for me because you know you you start looking through like, well, I'm supposed to have the white picket fence, or I'm supposed to have the boat, or I'm supposed to have the you know the the cool sports car. Well, yeah, but what if, what if what you're thinking in your head, you know, and that you're striving for and you're so mad at yourself when you don't get, what if that's really, you know, what you could do or what you could have is, you know, for you a hundred times better. Well, we are big Gary John Bishop fans here. So that uh, you, you're in the wheelhouse. In fact, that one of the questions that we like to ask and uh, and I'm just going to, because Jay always gets a chance to ask this question, and I'm always so jealous about it. So you're going to give me a chance to kind of uh, not be jealous of Jay's successful, great mm -hmm. questions that he asked. But you mentioned that you've been a reader since mm -hmm. way back. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Gary John Bishop's book, Enough Yourself, clearly is one of the ones that uh, is in the sweet spot for you. Mm -hmm. What other two mm -hmm. books? Oh, just, just two. Yeah. There we go. That's well, actually a, that's actually a really awesome answer that you say just two. Just two. Uh, but, but given that given that most people barely read a book a year uh, mm -hmm. or a book a decade, um, if you're going to give them three, so right. enough yourself is one. Enough yourself is one. Um, you know, if, if it's the guy that doesn't want to read a whole lot, you know, like I made my son read this book in an afternoon, and it's called The Coffee Bean. And I think the it's coffee, set, the, the, coffee the coffee bean. bean. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's like 75 pages. And basically it's, it's, it's just a way to think about things. It's, 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 you know, the coffee bean, when you put a coffee, basically kind of the, the, the crux of the book is when you put a coffee bean in boiling water, the coffee bean itself isn't affected, but the rest of the water is affected. It turns into coffee. 
as opposed to if you put a boiled, you know, if you put an egg in boiling water, you know, the egg gets hard inside and the water doesn't change. So just because hard things are presented in your life, don't don't allow them to change you internally, change your circumstances or change your environment. You know, and that's what the coffee means kind of about. Um, and so there's, oh, man. Uh, I mean, there's one I just got through reading, which was Sun Tzu's Art of War for Traders and Investors. And so they took a bunch of lessons from Sun Tzu and kind of likened it to the, you know, just different investing things. That was a great one. And it's, it's easy to do, um, you know, for, for insurance folks from good hands to boxing gloves. That's kind of a tongue in cheek one against with, with Allstate because <laughs> we won't spit that one out too much. But uh, there was one. Yeah. So the guy, Scott, is that, Adams, is that a book? Good hands to boxing gloves? Yeah, from Good Hands to Boxing Gloves. It's about when Allstate engaged the McKin was it McKinsey Group um, on how to handle claims and stuff like that. And it was it kind of feel dirty reading it. But um, <laughs> call a spade a spade, bro. But uh, you're like, ooh, this is how they do this? That's not cool. Um, and then probably Win Bigly, and I am saying that right, is B-I-G-L-Y by Scott Adams, the same guy that wrote uh, Dilbert. And so really? the, yeah, it's so the, it's, the book starts out with what he says something along the lines of I'm a self-proclaimed liberal. And let me tell you why Donald Trump won. And this was in 2016. So he goes through, but he, it's a it's a way it talks about cognitive dissonance, you know, and just why people are the way they are sometimes on the Internet or online or, or why, you know, why certain things stick and why certain things don't. But it's a it's it's all about arguments and how these things kind of came to pass. And it's extremely awesome way of looking at things sometimes where it's like, man, that does make sense as to why it works. He's like, yeah. That's how well, the is. author of Dilbert probably would write some cool stuff that would make yeah. it and pause for a minute. So, okay. The coffee bean, no one has ever said, uh, Jay, do you recall anybody ever no. mentioning that book? No, I wonder, I don't, I do wonder when Gary wrote his book, if he, if he knew everyone was going to change the title of it. No, is it just coffee bean? No, 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 no. Gary John Jeff Bishop's book. I, oh. everyone, everyone changes the title to "Unf Yourself" instead of actually what the title is. I just wonder if he, when he wrote it, he. Man, my grandma yeah. while I watch his mom watches podcast. I can't even say that in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> you tell Gary. I'm not. I mean, you know Gary. You tell him. I'm not saying that in front of my. Hello, name. Hello. hey grandma. Hello. 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 Yeah. grandma. Jared done good. Jared done good. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Who, who do you who do you follow, Jared? Uh, this year, last year, like on on social media or YouTube, <laughs> or who, like who's interesting to be? So following? I'm gonna be honest. I took I figured out that when I took Instagram, Facebook, everything off my phone, I didn't delete my account. I didn't my a my time on this thing went way down, right? Because the the one of the biggest things that I think I, I, I've done this year has been able to put this thing and be more present in the moment. And so I've kind of pulled back from social media from a, you know, just me being on my phone all the time, because once again, time, finite resource, kids, all that other fun stuff. And, you know, I don't want to be in the middle of family movie night looking through Facebook because, you know, mm. you know, Dolores Johnson, you know, her, she's really mad because she's got to wear a mask or doesn't have to wear a mask or whatever. Who cares? Right. Like, right. you know, so I found that like how much toxicity was out there. That doesn't mean that I don't still get on stuff. And, and I, you know, there's motivational things that I read. I do a lot more podcasts. I've been listening to y'all. You know, it's good stuff. It's good stuff yeah, there. Thanks. You know, um, did you, you, listen, know, most did you time, listen to Gary? I didn't listen to Gary. Oh, it's Gary. I haven't listened to Gary. Yeah, I mean, we, I've we listened to, Gary. I listen to Paul because, you know, for whatever reason. It might come up. It might come yeah, up. Yeah, it might come up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, like you guys have had some awesome people on here. That's why, you know, you know, one of the reasons it's it's really humbling for me because I'm like, I am nowhere near these guys. You know, I'm nowhere near these folks, but I'm going to do what I can do, you know. But anyway, uh, yeah, I do a lot more reading now than I do uh, social media, and that's a, probably a good thing. That's probably just, that's probably really smart in the first time that anyone's <laughs> ever said that on here. So. You are correct. <laughs> yeah. You are correct, yes. So um, at this point, Jared, I, I want to I wanna thank you uh, for getting mm -hmm. on here and you know, it's, it's interesting to me when we do this podcast, how candid people become with mm -hmm. their life and their past. And um, I'm not sure what it is that Greg and I do, but like, I think it's, um, it's great that we can get that out of you because the reason I think it's great is because I think everyone has a past. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes when people hear really successful people that they've gone through this, they can kind of remove those excuses 
mm-hmm. and say, you know what? I went through that and I'm like just sulking in it right now. This guy went through that. He was with the sisters. He had a bad stepdad, blah, 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 blah. blah. You know, the, the story goes on. So I'm just so glad that you shared that with us and, and not just, we like to share the good, but I think we like the ugly better because- it's real. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's real. It's real yeah. and, and people can relate with ugly because no one's life is perfect, right? No. I mean, no one's child. Well, that's social well, media, right? Like a lot of it's is the, is well, one of my buddies calls it the highlight reel, right? Like, yeah, you it's know, not, it's not, you're not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna share shit that's like gonna make people like be like, man, God, I mean, you gotta it's go through there. that, right? Yeah, right. So then, I mean, I mean, it actually causes depression for people because they just think yes. everyone's life is great and great. Way better and it's than like, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so um, your ingredients for success: um, grow past your start. I love, I love that comment. Meaning. You know, a lot of people start off really great and then they just stay there and you got to continue to grow. Listen to the other side of the argument. I don't, think, great. I don't think a lot of people do that in their marriages. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they just they have their argument. They want to be right. Um, hard things make you grow. Get bigger, better. And then I'm going to come find you. Um, I like that because, you know, when you get kicked and you get down, like having that mentality, I'm going to get bigger, I'm going to get better. And then I'm going to come find you and I'm going to take you down. And and maybe it's not physical, but like just that mentality Mm -hmm. of I can get better than I am right now. Um, success for you is providing for your kids, spending time with your kids when you want to spend time with them, freedom to do the things that you want to do when you want, like go play 18 holes after this podcast. You might run out of light, but it, you could probably, if it's just you, you might be able to do it. Um, and the freedom to create. And and what I understood from freedom to create is just having the time to be creative. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I really like that. And then um, you will be blessed if you bless others. Um, you know, I think a lot of people forget about that and because mm-hmm. we're so selfish. So I think it's a great reminder. Um, you never get moments back. Uh, that was a really good one for me. Uh, I'm really don't want to miss moments, but that is just a reminder for me, Jared, that I'm never going, going to miss moments. There's just no reason. Um, your, uh, legacy that you want to leave with your kids is uh, proper preparation, uh, prevents Prevent. piss poor performance. Um, to be a man of your word, uh, don't, uh, be led by fear and, Picking the right partner is key. And uh, that's a good one, my friend. Uh, I, 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 for me, you know, the wife is really important. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously that holds everything together. But I think picking the right business partner sometimes is, is, is way harder than picking the right wife. Um, True story. And it's crazy because I've been a horrible husband in the uh, first two marriages. And I would just say that I was a horrible partner myself and I couldn't find good partners, but business is tough, man, because Mm -hmm. uh, when money gets involved and ego gets involved and and greed and all those things come into play, you have to make sure you you pick the right people. And that's the right people. Yep. It's not easy to do. Um, If you're led by fear, you will be reactive. And I think, um, the only thing missing in that sentence is you'll be reactive and you won't take action. Won't take mm-hmm. action. Um, so I, I really love that, that uh, comment. And then the books that you recommend, um, it's my podcast. And as if your grandma's listening, I'm sorry, but the book That's I would okay. actually unfuck yourself. Um, I was I, late. I was late. With that. <laughs> Coffee bean. I mean, listen, it's in Barnes and Nobles for God's sake. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, 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 listen, I interviewed Gary about this and I was like, mm-hmm. you know, cause we had some people at ASA who were like, you know, we're going to ban ASA. We can't believe that you're going to have, you know, someone that has a curse word in the title of his book. And I interviewed Gary about it and he was like, it's just a word. It's just a word. It's just and it's a word. Ha- and he's like, and it's how I talk. <laughs> <laughs> Are you mad at him? <laughs> um, so I think you said Sun Tzu. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, um, Sun Tzu, so Sun Tzu's art of war. So there's art of war, right? That's what Sun Tzu wrote. But these guys, it's Sun Tzu's art of war for investors and traders. Okay. So okay. Great. You know, and then, um, good hands to boxing gloves. I definitely am going to read that one. That one seems like a very interesting read. And then, uh, win bigly. I, I definitely, you know, the way that Donald Trump won is very interesting to me. 
Um, and I think what I'm getting from that book is there are ways to win in life that other people are not doing. Mm -hmm. And not that I want to do it like Donald Trump, but I definitely think there's better strategies um, that, that I can learn from this. And Dilbert is a really creative um, individual and a creative mind. So those are the ingredients for success for Jared Moore, man. And I, I, I just got to say, I appreciate all of your candor, um, honesty, and openness to share with all of us and our listeners today, man. So thank you so much for coming on here, Jared. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you for keeping it real, buddy. Absolutely. There's no other way. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> All right. Have a good day, brother. We're out. You too, man. Thanks, guys. Okay.